everyone and welcome back to The Doctor's Garage here on YouTube. So in this video today I'm in my Discovery 5 and well it's not actually my Discovery 5. As you know if you watch the channel this is a car that I've got. It is a Discovery 5 but it's not mine. Mine's still in the garage getting repaired but that is a whole other story for a whole other video that you might have already seen here on the channel. If you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos on the channel. But today I'm talking about something not to do with the technicality of the car, the reliability of the car, I'm actually talking about insurance and particularly insuring Land Rovers and the surprise I got this year when it came for renewing my quote. So you may have seen this year, earlier this year and also literally in the last few weeks, that in London insuring your Land Rover is getting very difficult and particularly insuring a Range Rover. So particularly the full-size Range Rover, the Vogue let's call it, and then Range Rover Sports is almost impossible it's super super expensive and a lot of insurers are pulling out of insuring them at all and in this video i want to talk about the impact that's had i guess on the industry but also on the value for me as well what difference has that made to my insurance because i was quite surprised to get my renewal quote this year and i think some of the factors that are playing into that is if you have a non-brand new land rover range rover discovery whatever it might be that your car has decreased in value more so in the last six to nine months than it did in the last two years because we all know that the prices of cars were quite high and um, post covid pandemic all this stuff we're getting parts as i'm experiencing at the moment with my wiring harness i'm waiting on my discovery 5. however because of that your the cost of your car has probably plummeted quite fast if you've been checking your car and we buy any car or just keeping up with car values in general you'll see right now is a great time to be buying a car because prices of used cars are quite low even on models like the new defender they've certainly dropped prices compared to what the premiums are trading at um post pandemic and the strange thing is in combination with that happening and your value of your car dropping my premium has significantly shot up on my insurance so this year now my insurance is 450 pound more with my same insurer than it was last year. So it's getting to around £1,000 a year to insure this Discovery 5, which is quite a lot of money. And certainly, you know, for some reason, insurance goes up every year anyway, even though the value of your asset goes down, your car. However, I think when it jumps £400, so before it was around the five 600 mark, you're talking you know, like a 70, 80% increase in the premium, it's quite significant. It's quite a lot of money to be going up by. And that is largely driven by the fact that these cars, Land Rovers in general, but particularly the desirable end of the Land Rover range, so your Range Rovers specs, they are getting stolen more and more and more. And particularly in the capital in London, they're just getting stolen a lot. And I've had a lot of personal stories from friends that live in London that have heard of many stories of their friends' cars, their neighbours' cars getting stolen straight off the driveway. Now I looked a little bit more into this and uh, I've got an article right here that I'm just gonna read off. So this was the own, owners of Range Rovers living in London are finding their vehicles have become uninsurable. So sky high premiums and a reduction in the number of firms willing to insure them. So in 2022, Range Rovers were the second most stolen car in the UK with over 5,200 taken, the majority of them stolen in central London. And that has obviously increased in loads of people claiming for the vehicles stolen. And as a result, the insurance companies aren't insuring. Or if they are insuring, they're charging a hell of a lot on your yearly premium. So going through this, there's some, some people that are quoted here. And there's also um, just a, a little exercise that I did, which was looking at what would an insurance premium be if you live in London? So with my calculation, I did a Range Rover. Um, you know, more than new Range Rovers are over 100 grand, the new ones. And the quotes for the insurance were between 3,000 to 5,000 pound with a 1,200 pound excess. That's quite a significant amount of money for your insurance if you can't. And if you do it for something like a Bentley Bentayga, a G-Wagon, you'll see the premiums are way, way lower. You're more in the thousand pound mark if you look at those premiums. And so what it tells you is that insurers are really, really not keen to insure Range Rovers, Land Rovers in general at the moment because they're getting nicked so much. And as I mentioned, depending on your postcode, you might not really be able to get insured with your insurer at all. Loads of people are just losing their insurance and having to seek elsewhere. So you've got to think, why is that happening? Why are they getting stolen? And I've done a video here on YouTube before all around stopping your Land Rover from getting stolen and the fact that the security on them is not brilliant in the sense of thieves can 
break into them quite easily. They often scan your keys. I did a whole video here on YouTube that many people have watched, which was around Faraday pouches and hiding your keys and making sure that no one can scan the keys from inside your house. Uh, a few updates on that. A few people have told me in those comments. Firstly, if you do buy a Faraday pouch, you need to make sure that you're checking if it's still working because apparently eventually they stop working. So basically put them in the little pouch, walk up to your car, see if it opens. If it does, it's not working because the signal's getting out. And you can make your own Faraday pouch by putting your keys in a tin can, I believe. I read that. Someone's told me that. Don't know how true it is. I haven't tried it myself. But um, essentially guarding your keys is a good thing to do in one respect. I think the other thing to know is some people might say guarding your keys is a bad idea because actually if people want your vehicle, let's say you've got a new Range Rover, you're probably better with them just taking the keys in the car because if they do really want it and they come into your house, things can get pretty nasty. And so in some ways, I'd rather just leave my keys out and let them nick it, to be honest, if you can get insured and you're going to get paid for the price of it. So that's one thing to know about is it a security that's the problem? And yes, it probably is to a degree. They are easier to steal, apparently, than other vehicles like the German manufacturers um, in the same kind of price range. But I think another fact that, I, that I've, uh, I've been reading about online and something that I think is quite important is this. Range Rovers and Range Rover Sports, let's say, are hugely desirable all over the world. And as a result, these will have a really good chance of getting one of these cars away to a new buyer very quickly there's probably order books for these cars. They can get rid of them very easily for a very good amount of money. And as a result, thieves will also target them more, so more get nicked. But it also means that they'll probably invest in the technology to steal the cars as well. So even if they are a bit easier to steal compared to, I don't know, a Bentley Bentayga, the thieves are more likely to get the technology, learn how these cars lock, unlock, and all the things that come around with that, and actually spend more time invested in stealing those cars because they have such high residuals around the world. They're such an attractive car for so many reasons the world over. Whereas something like a Bentayga, as we keep using that example, although it's an attractive car and it's a desirable car, it doesn't quite have the same appeal let's say, as a Range Rover in some respects. At least that's what the data shows in regards to how many are nicked and how many are sold and how many new cars are on the road and the waiting list for these vehicles. Um, although people have a go at Land Rover a lot, there's no denying that the new Range Rovers, for example, are a hugely attractive car and they are amazing. They are, and they're amazing, particularly when they work, they are absolutely brilliant cars. I've said that about my Discovery before, it's not a Range Rover, but when this car works or when my, my Discovery does work, I absolutely love it and I could not imagine a better car. So finally brings me to the point of when I finally get my Discovery back, my insurance has gone up by £450 with my current insurer. Yes, I could probably find somewhere else and try and chip that down somewhere, but it's probably a market trend that it has gone up for Land Rovers in general. The value of it has gone down it's due for its new warranty uh, in February, I think, next year for its Land Rover approved warranty, which is £1,000. And just cost versus benefit, I think it's getting to the point now where it definitely has to go. Still on the hunt for the new one. Haven't decided what that's going to be quite yet. And it'd be interesting to hear what your perspective is of that. If you live in London, if you live in a place where Range Rovers are stolen a lot, what are your premiums looking like? What are your premiums looking like over the whole Land Rover range? I can say I haven't noticed a difference in my Defender, for example. I think it's certainly the newer vehicles. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, what's happened to your premiums this year for your vehicle? As always, thanks so much for watching the video. Subscribe to my channel, like the video, and let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you very soon.